Well, hello. Welcome once again to Pale Blooms and Beyond. Thank you for joining us today. John Scally is a Scottish guitarist, most known as a member of Glasgow band The Orchids. The Five Piece Unit formed in 1985 and were the second band to record on independent label Sarah Records. Prior to originally splitting up in 1995, the band had recorded and released three albums, several singles. There's also a couple of compilation albums and two John Peel sessions from that period. The band saw a reformation in 2004 and since that time have released four more albums and a few singles. The band's latest is The Dreaming Kind from 2022, and John tells me the band is currently working on new material. The band's lineup today is Ronnie Borland, bass, keyboards, guitar, vocals, James Hackett, lead vocals, acoustic guitar, melodica, Chris Quinn, drums, percussion, John on lead guitar, keyboards, and Keith Sharp, rhythm guitar. Well, welcome, John. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Hi, nice to meet you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Well, take us back to the beginning. Uh, yep. where, where were you born? I was born in Glasgow um, oh. in 1967, just, just before Christmas. So a long, long time ago. <laughs> okay. And it's getting longer with each year. It does. <laughs> it does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of a hometown uh, boy myself. Lived in and around Dallas, born in Dallas, and lived uh -huh. in and around this area most of my life. Um, yeah. well, do you have fond childhood memories growing up? Yes, I did. Um, it's kind of grew up um, just in a kind of, well, we call them housing schemes, uh -huh. um, social housing scheme. And but and kind of had lots of friends in the same road, like Chris and James and myself went to the same schools, and myself and James lived in the same road. Up until we were like uh, early, like late teens, early adults, before moving away or whatever. So, yeah, lots okay. of good memories. Yeah, were either one of your parents uh, musically inclined at all? Um, my fa I think my father played piano, but not nothing. We didn't really had musical instruments in the house and stuff like that. Um, you, I didn't. No, no, my my, parent, I wouldn't say, my my father said he played piano at school. Okay, How about I didn't uh, have a piano in the house. So, and not in the house, though. No. How about early on? Do you remember hearing music in the house? Oh, I just did loads of like we when we had like Christmas parties and or any parties in the house. Like, yeah, we had, I had uncles and cousins that would bring instruments and play stuff. Like we'd, we'd get Irish, Scottish, Irish folk songs and stuff like that. Oh, okay, that's cool. So, that's cool. Yeah, well, but it was always like um, kind of like music. Like be like, there was always a radiogram in the oh. in the living room. The main okay. room, and people would. I remember hearing things like my grandmother liked things like Hank Williams and things like that. So uh, these were things that were played, and then obviously my mother was playing things like the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and things like that. Oh, okay, okay. So you got those influences. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, uh, was the guitar the first instrument you picked up and learned to play? Yes, yes. I, I remember getting. A, I got a small acoustic guitar for a birthday when I was about maybe eight or nine. Kind of thing, so that was kind of the beginning. Okay, all right. Did you did you practice in front of the yeah. mirror? And do, no, oh, no, I that. jumped about in the mirror. Listen, we we would have the, the <laughs> BBC had the chart show every Sunday, so the charts would come out, and so you'd be sitting listening to songs and just strumming oh. along and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, can you remember the one of the first singles or albums that you got that you bought yourself? I do actually. Um, funny enough. One of the first songs I ever bought was Roll Away the Stone by Mott the Hoople. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's probably came out, it must have come out about 1973 or 74. Okay. So I would only be about seven or eight kind of thing at that age. Seven, something like that, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a big Mott the Hoople, Ian Hunter fan, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, oh, a great, oh. it's a great song. It's a great song. Yes, it's, yes. And it's it still is. one of my favourites. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, uh, how about some uh, other artists and musicians that you were into early on? Well, uh, um, I guess as we kind of hop into the nineteen eighties, and we were, like, we were like myself, Chris, and James, we were early teenagers at school, so we were starting to get into it was like alternative. They called yeah. it alternative eighties stuff. So there was obviously things like Aztec Camera, Orange Juice, 
There was the the Joy Divisions, the magazines, Simple Minds. I'm a big Simple Minds fan, um, yes. kind of thing. Chris was into Joy Division. Yeah. Um, as I say, there was things like Orange Juice, Aztec Camera, all that kind of genre. Um, oh, oh yeah. Kind of stuff. Did you like? Did you like some of the early uh, like postcard materials? Yes. Oh, yeah. I postcards a big thing. Obviously, coming from Glasgow, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and we were really lucky. We we kind of got to see like bands like Primal Scream and Jesus oh. and the Mary Chain when they were playing really small venues in Glasgow. Yeah. Now, now is it true? I have to ask you about. Or I guess early on with Jesus and the Mary Chain, would they actually turn their back to the audience and yes. play? Yes. <laughs> okay. They yes. did. Do that. <laughs> they did. <laughs> okay. Okay. And you'd be lucky. Sometimes I'm. I'm sure we're about to see Jesus and Mary Chain, and you'd be lucky if you get a set that lasted more than fifteen minutes. Oh, okay. It was oh. like the splash, they called it the splash one happening club nights, and that yeah. was a kind of thing. 20 minutes was tops. Was that right? Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because a lot of their songs were pretty short anyway. Yeah. Yeah. They just kind of just kind of ran through them. Well, mm -hmm. how about how about uh speaking of that, was that one of the first concerts that you attended, or can you remember one of the first <laughs> uh, first concerts, God. I remember going to see you, went to Apollo, you see UB40. Okay. okay. Kind of thing, that would be about 1980, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, okay. And just on for there, kind of thing. Um, and then obviously Glasgow Barrowlands kind of opened just maybe 1982, would that be? So I met a lot of bands and started playing the Glasgow Barrowland, okay. which is like famous. And um, so I saw things like Simple Minds, Echo and the Bunny Men. Oh. Um, loads of the water boys could go and for hours talking about the like gigs you saw at the, bar the Barlands. Yeah, I'd love to see Mike Scott. I, I've never seen them, I've never seen them. Oh, well, the, I have to say, the water boys back in the 1980s were I mean, they still are, but they were superb. But that kind of right. uh, mid, mid 80s, the lineup was fantastic. Oh, yes, I love that material from that time period, yeah. too. Well, yes. uh, so speaking of that, was there a, like a kind of a growing music scene around you at that time? I was, well, I mean, again, me kind of just, as I said, we were listening to these bands who were playing like the, the Primal Screams and the Jesus and the Mary Chains and think other bands in and around. And uh, I mean, obviously, there was the Pastels, The Wake. Um, so oh, yeah. I'd be kind of roughly about 1986, maybe we had started getting guitars together, started rehearsing just kind of things. And then 1987, we managed to put out our first kind of first single. Okay. So um it just I just I remember meeting demos and obviously set of records picked up on it. Okay. So that was it, that was the beginning for us. Yeah. Okay, okay. Were you before that? Were you uh, in a band before the Orchids? No, was... no, no, I've only ever been in one band. Okay, okay, all right. Well you are you are you are loyal. Let's, let's I'm, I'm one, enough. one band's enough. <laughs> loyal to a fault. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> not 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 really. Well the uh, the original band that we become the Orchids went through a series of name changes. Yes. Before, can you recall some of the other oh, names? We had loads. There was the Bridge. There was a Splendor. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gentle Tuesday, which we were asked to remove by a certain individual. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we know he's a, he's a bit of an asshole these days, so that's all right. <laughs> um, so. We finally settled on the orchids as we as we were kind of finishing off the demos that then went on to Sarah Records kind of stuff. Okay. Well, General um, General Tuesday sounds like a Sarah Sarah band. The the name sounds yeah, like I got no. <laughs> um, did you guys did, did all the members uh, have similar taste in, in music and influences? At the time, I mean, the first kind of lineup of the orchids were it was like James Moody and Matthew Drummond. Uh, we all kind of had lots of we we kind of had the kind of postcard stuff, yeah. Um, and also there was like the kind of James Moody was kind of he was very much into things like the the Clash, okay, and ex old kind of punk bands kind of stuff. So I there was there was a common interest and in stuff like that. Um, but we do all have wide vary. You know, it's like you you go older, you get more varied. Yes, interest yes. in music, more things come along and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And a lot of times, the, the stuff that was uncool back then, with time, yes. becomes more, more cool. <laughs> more, aye, aye. Yeah, you know, I noticed that with my taste. You know, <laughs> stuff that, and it had a lot to do with peer pressure too. You know, well, the cool kids weren't into 
you know, let, let's say ABBA, you know, for, for instance. Oh, well, no, no, see, I've never, uh, you know, I've but then as the ABBA. time is like that, you know, you see. No, 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 I've always stood up for ABBA, never ever denied <laughs> that was anti ABBA. Um, in fact, one of my favorite, I remember, that's how old I am. Um, Grease the movie came out at the same time as Abba the movie. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And okay. I know that Abba the movie is by far the better. Okay, movie right. And right. There's better songs. Right, right. You know, just a couple of days ago, I, I was going through my Facebook, saw an old picture of the Bay City Rollers and with those flared jeans, you know, the pants that they had. Uh-huh. <laughs> and oh. I almost put a I almost put a comment on there and said, Where can I get me a pair of pants like that today? <laughs> you know, they, they could uh, get away with things like that. Well, um, yes, you mentioned that the uh, 87 uh, first release. It was on a it was a flexi disc. Yeah. Yeah. No, so right. 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 Yeah. right. Explain to uh, those that don't know or maybe too young. Uh, what, Fle- what, what, God, that's a good flexi discs were kind of things that started and like, kind of like there was like, the underground movement with the pop scenes. And they had to be fanzines, like be mini magazines, where people were just writing about their favourite bands, any concerts that they had been to, and they were obviously doing reviews. And some of these pops, these kind of fanzines then started giving away, like, uh, they would put two bands on a flexi disc, which was a very thin plastic see through piece. It's not even vinyl, is it? It's just like a, a see through bit of plastic that was seven inches. Yeah. And yeah. just played like a normal 45 so yeah oh, and, um, maybe a step above the uh, the ones that used to get on back backs of cereal boxes maybe just a little bit better, yeah. better than uh, those uh, <laughs> i've not seen one in years i don't even think i own one i think i uh-huh. gave up mine away <laughs> sorry me yeah i have a yeah. few still yeah well, that was from from this day uh, yeah and then um and on that same uh, flexidus was the uh the sea urchins that's right. right. Yeah. They, they they had a track on there too. They do. And, yeah. and and then unfortunately, uh, they beat you to the punch. They were the first band signed. They were the first band signed. They were the first release on set of records. Yeah. And you were the second. We were the second. Yes, number two. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's not bad. That's not bad. No, 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 no. We, hey, we were just happy that somebody offered us a, a kind of chance to put a, a, a real vinyl record. Right, right. That was and, just the, that was the first aim as a band. Oh wow! If somebody, if somebody puts a, a record with the Orchids, we'll be happy. Right. And, it and that's that's always been that's like we never had any ideas or superstardom. It was just obviously getting a song on a record that people wanted to hear and that people liked. And I think that's still the same today. It's like that's good achievement. <laughs> Yes, yes, it is. Well, well, and and I've I've heard with Sarah, it wasn't so much. Uh, I mean, you didn't sign an official contract. No, you know? no, 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 no. You just you just put records out on the label. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. and that that's a nice you know kind of arrangement. Oh no, and, and Matt and Claire were fantastic. They were they right. were upfront about how they operated. They were very very fair to bands and stuff like that. And um, they were great. They were really really great. Right. I think they, that's why even to this day they still have that endearing quality. You do, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bands that were on there, and also the fans. Uh huh. And if the fact it's Sarah Records, I mean, obviously, the in the last few years, the the kind of revival of Sarah Records and various films and books, it's it's amazing. That's, yes. that's great. Yes, I I, I think um, uh, Field Mice was the first band I picked up on. Right. that was on Sarah and then I just wanted to buy everything you know oh, <laughs> I, right. okay you know because I, I I just love that that, that style and I, you know and the bands that were on there you, yeah. you, yourself yourselves included you know um uh, on on your second single uh underneath the window uh-huh um it, it included a poster that showed the band wasn't afraid to be a little political <laughs> and, pro- and protest the poll tax yes <laughs> I, would. I mean that was a thing it was unique to kind of well, it was Brit- it was uh, Margaret Thatcher brought in this new tax, it was to kind of thing, and it was an unfair system. Still, yeah. and we still have it. It's like, well, it's in another format, but it's still very unfair. But at the time, um, there was a lot of kickback against it, and it did get. It was a policy. It went wrong for Margaret Thatcher. So, yeah, um, uh, that was that was the beginning. Uh, well, well, we we, we nailed our colours to the mast on the poll tax. Um, right. 
we are, I would say, we, I, we are political, but we don't go shouting for the rooftops about it. We've all, we're individuals, so we all have our own thing, our thoughts and things. Yeah. Well, it was, it was good that you weren't afraid to stand up uh -huh. against that, you know. Uh -huh. uh, uh, moving ahead to uh, 1989's Lyceum. Yep. Um, I like uh, a couple of tracks on there that I like. Uh, the York song uh -huh. um, and Blue Light. Those are those yep. are probably my two favorites. Okay, uh, right. Yeah. And that's going to be getting released on vinyl soon. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I've had more details I'll be able to tell you, Greg, um, but it's getting oh, reissued and soon. All right. Well, that's fine. I think it's going to come out in 12 inch vinyl. Okay. As opposed well, to 10. Well, <laughs> that is close, you're right. Well, that, well, that's something for fans to, to yeah. look forward to. Yeah. There. I think it'll be, it'll be one of the old kind of limited. It'll be like 500. Okay. So, okay. kind of thing and see what the demand is like. Right, right. And they might increase it. Yeah, after might that. Increase it. I mean, <laughs> as, as I said, like the Peel sessions get released on vinyl. That's that They've sold out. That's. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So that's been really good. Right, right. Well, speaking of that, I mean, we could talk about that, uh, how influential uh, John Peel, I mean, he helped jumpstart so many careers yeah. in, in bands, yeah, man. And he uh -huh. has such a wide taste, wide variety of, of bands that he would play and, and, and push. So, uh, yeah, he's, that was not, that's not a bad thing to put on your CV. Uh, no, <laughs> you no, no. And again, we were, uh, we were really, really fortunate and happy to get offered a John Peel session. Right, right. Um, that was just an adventure. It was like, wow. Um, and again, that was doing to Sarah Records. Been on Sarah Records, kind of gave, they were getting publicity. John Peel said, well, let's get a couple of Sarah bands in for sessions. Yeah. And then, so, there they you were go. really happy to go and do it. And then we got to do it again, which was great. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Did you get a chance to meet him? Or, or... No, we never met him. Never oh, met him. No. Okay. I think yeah, I think he was very famously shy about that kind of thing. That he'd right, be. I've heard that. I've heard that uh -huh. story. You know, you know, yeah. he originally got his start over here in like Oklahoma. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah. So. Interesting, because we loved anything from Liverpool. You know, mm -hmm. and, and you know, coming over after the Beatles, of course, and anyone with a Liverpoolian, Liverpudlian accent, you know, was <laughs> he was going to make it over here? So uh -huh. yeah, that's interesting. Interesting. Well. um, from the Penetration EP from yep. uh, 1991, I like the uh, last two tracks, um, Pelican Blonde and Tropical Fishbowl. Those those right, are okay. those are my two favorites. Do you have any uh, any stories about uh, either um, one? Of them? Yeah, we we had to move when we were recording that. We had been using we had a studio that we used quite a lot. Um, uh, it was Ian Carmichael Studio. But Ian had been working in what was a, a kind of a bigger studio for some time. It was called Park, Park Lane Studios in the south side of Glasgow. It's where a lot of bands like the Bluebells and the Delamitri and that all kind of recorded. So he managed to wing it for us to go in there at a reduced rate. And we, that's where we recorded quite a few of the tracks for the Pelican, like the, the Penetration EP kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So um, they, they were good times. Um, Tropical, uh, Tropical Fishbowl is actually one of my favourite Orchid songs. I quite oh, like okay. it. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, great. Well, you have, good taste. you have good taste. Then. No, I just <laughs> think it's really, it's, I think it's different. Um, yeah, yeah. And we, sometimes we just used to, let's let's try that for a change. Um, it was a bit more imagine. It's, 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 there's a lot of imagination into it, so I quite like it. Yes, yes. Did you, uh, speaking of uh, uh, Bluebells, did you see my interview with Ken, Ken McCluskey? No, I haven't. No, no. no that was that was a uh, uh, maybe a month ago, month and a half. Yeah, go back and check. He's a really nice guy too. Oh, he is. Yeah, no, we we um, we played with him a few years ago in Preston. Yeah, there was a Preston pop fest during COVID. Yeah. So when when the when the lockdown kind of finished, we kind of headed to we, we we played in Preston. So it was one of the, it was like a gig, but in social distancing. So right, right. It was really strange. It was good. It was very very good. But either great guys. Right, right. They are. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm kind of making the rounds in your area. You know, I've talked to, I don't know, you guys are, uh, maybe it's a little bit of the, the heritage, you know, my my blood. There's, there's a connection, seems like, that I make. And you guys are kind of open 
to to talk, you know, and to do oh. these. You know, it's it seems like you know. So I do my fair share with uh, you know, Scots. And, oh no, uh, I think Scots like really good conversation. Right. I, I think mm-hmm. maybe that's it. Maybe that's because uh-huh. I do myself. So but I think oh, that good. that's part of that genes. Well, um, then I'm uh, moving. Oh well, the same year actually. The the album Unholy Soul. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll I'll mention a, a few tracks on here and then and see if you have any stories or uh. And you go and anecdotes and yeah, uh, bringing you the love. Uh, mm-hmm. like I like the guitar interplay in, in that one, right? And, and then, uh, long drawn Sunday night, right? Is, is another one, and then dirty clothing, of course, yeah. Uh, you know, oh, good. Like... no, I think, um, we were really proud of Unholy Soul, yeah. um, because obviously, I see was seen as a kind of mini album, yeah, yeah. but um. Recording um, Unholy Soul was a kind of lengthy, it must have been a good few months. It kind of happened over mostly over the winter. Okay. Um, and it took us in, we started one year and finished obviously the next year. Um, and I so it must have been like three months. And we had spent a lot more time writing the songs, rehearsing them, kind of thing. Um, Fleshing them out. You know, and then taking them out and flashing them out and then taking them into the studio. And obviously, there is other movie go obviously bringing you the love's got the banjo. Yes, yes. So we, we we knew somebody, a friend who played banjo, so we called him in to play banjo. Yeah. Kind of thing. That and works. We, yeah. Yep. And then obviously the other songs we had the vocals uh Pauline. Yes, yes. Coming right. in to play and stuff like that. So um and then we started again, we also started that was the kind of beginning of the process to use a bit more technology. Yep. Like sampling and sequencing and stuff like that. Um, so we were more open to that. And it was like, I guess, obviously, there was a bit of dance came out at that time, was the dance scene and stuff. So yep. these influences were starting to come in, kind of thing. Um, it's like A Sadness of Sex is a song that was completely written in the studio. We just, Ian said, what's, what's next? We'd, we'd yep. obviously recorded one song, finished that, and he said, right, what's next? Yeah. He says, we've not wrote it yet. We're just, we're going to write it now. And he was kind of like, <laughs> no, no, no. We've got some chords, but we don't know. We're just going to start with the chords and see where it goes. And that became the sadness of sex. Yeah. Can well, I, actually, I actually like the second part of that, waiting for the storm. I like waiting that. For the storm. Yeah. yeah. And it all right, kind of sort of. It, right. I, it, I guess that's it was that was a creative process. We we were we had songs, but we were starting to add bits and pieces to them as we went along. And you're thinking, oh, uh, and I did at that time. You had a really before digital technology, really. Yeah. You were able to tape things. You could hear tape tape things off a of radio and stuff like that. So I would I was into taping like kind of things off like Radio Four or news broadcasts that, again. And obviously, sadness is actually you get um, Cary Grant. Yeah. So right. Cary Grant, somebody like um, as a band, we all kind of all we like Cary. Like Arsenic and Old Lace is just a great film. And then yep. just the quotes are fantastic. So they, they, they all kind of fitted into the mix kind of right. thing. Right. I think, I think it showed that you guys were uh, pretty versatile too, you know, to uh-huh. be able to go. I think, I think as well, when, when you're recording, it's all about how enjoying the process in the moment right. and being spontaneous. And I think that comes out in Unholy Soul. Yeah. Well, let me ask you about that. Uh, I was going to ask later, but since you brought it up, do you yourself prefer uh, recording the writing and recording process or playing live? Oh, um, I think they're both good. I think they, they have their. It's um, when you're in the studio and it's going well, and it's going well and you're enjoying it. That's that's great because when you get when you start to get the feeling that you're all kind of working, it's a bit like a football team or a sports team when right. you're all kind of going in the same direction and it's there's a flow. It, right. It's good. It's creative. It's brilliant. So you get that feeling the same as when you're playing live. Yeah. And you're connecting with an audience, and you're connecting mm-hmm. as musicians on a studio and a stage. Then it's it's great. Oh, that's six, six of one. Half, it's brilliant. Six, six of one, half dozen the other. Yeah. 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 I think that's 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 true. You you can't beat that immediate connection with with the audience. Uh-huh. But then again, like you said, when you're when you're hitting on all cylinders uh, uh-huh. in the recording studio it's nothing like that it's like a family you know? yeah i mean bands are like a family you know it's well, just that social connect between different yeah. like, five human beings who are all playing various instruments or whatever and you're playing and again 
if you're on the stage and you play a song and you get an instant reaction from an audience, then yeah. then that can't be beaten. That's but that's pretty that's brilliant. That's good. Yes. Yes, I can imagine. I've never played any instrument or you know been in a band, but I can it's imagine. Never too late. <laughs> Somebody told me that the other day too. It's never too late. <laughs> I'll be on I'll be on my deathbed learning. The, the I'm sure you get the Scottish jeans and you could get the bagpipes. Uh, there you go. There you go. I'll pick up the bagpipes. Uh, there. Very good. But good advice there. Well, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't play the bagpipes. Don't play the bagpipes. Um, uh, well, the first, the first, I, I kind of uh, got into you guys a little late in, in in your career, or a little late in the early uh-huh. going. Uh, first single that I picked up was Thaumaturgy. 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 The thaumaturgy. Okay, now yes. see. All right. I should have asked you beforehand how to pronounce oh. that. Thaumat- thaumaturgy. Thaumaturgy, yeah. Thaumaturgy. It's yeah, thaumaturgy. The art of working miracles. Ah, okay, okay. I should have looked that up. Well, oh. it's one of my favorite oh, orchestra, nice. orchestra songs. And uh, uh-huh. and yes, I like the uh, echoey drums at the end, too. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. It really, it really. We've nice. actually just, we, we've played a couple of gigs recently, and we... We've put that in the set for the first time in years. Oh, okay. So we played it, and we are playing Paris next next Friday. Okay. So it's in it's in the set for Friday in Paris. Uh huh. So it's 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 not a song we've often played live, but we brought it back, and that's been it's been good. It's been. Good. I was going to ask, did it go down well? Uh, it did. Yeah, we played Glasgow, and it went down well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then um, the first album that I picked up was uh, "Striving for the Lazy Perfection." Yeah. Um, and uh, that's nice album. Really nice album. Um, probably my favorite. Well, I mean, oh, I'm, bi- I'm biased because that's the one I got. I picked. Oh, that's up. what you get into, and that's right. Right. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but uh, the title track, uh, "Striving for the Lazy Perfection,", lazy perfection nice, yeah. nice techno pop. You know, mm-hmm. on that one, you're talking about getting into the dance uh, scene and everything. Um, beautiful liar. I like the guitar, um, and then that reminds me a little of a Primal Scream. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of that. Uh, the guitar, especially. Uh, nice. I mean, I wouldn't have thought, you know, with the material that you had done, or or let's say material most bands on Sarah, that that kind of guitar would work, but it did. It did work on that song. You know, it really no, yeah. Well, I, it's like everybody, I think every band, had, again, ourselves in the field mice, I think we were kind of pushed, we, we saw that we had to kind of push boundaries and we wanted to make, we didn't want to make records were the same as the last one. Right. And I think so. Um, so again, I, that's, that's, well, Striving came out in ninety four, kind of thing. It, again, it had been a longer process to it kind of get recorded in two kind of stints. Yeah, we kind of recorded half of it, and then James Moody, um, he left and went to live in Sweden. Oh, okay. Kind of thing, and that's where Ronnie Borland came into the mix. Um, oh. so again, he he's it was like he was in the second half of the album, kind of thing. So, um. But again, there was lots of different influences going on. I, what was I list? I mean, again, in terms of guitar for like, um, Beautiful Liar, uh, I possibly Primal Scream did influence that. I couldn't say. I would maybe say that at that time I was more into things like Echo and the Bunnymen and things like that, uh, Will Sargent. Um, oh, yeah. I go, huh? yeah. Well, I'll tell you another track on there that it was, to me, very Primal Scream-ish. Uh, I was just dreaming, uh, yeah. and, and that's one of my favorites on on the album. Uh-huh. You know? And the uh, I, I think the vocals, you know, uh, oh, is what yeah. reminds me of that primal scream, uh, a, a kind of Eden. Uh, yeah, that's that's like the perfect pop song. Totally, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Love, love the guitar again, um, yeah. and I'm not I'm not just because I'm talking to you. You know, um, I would tell that to anybody. Uh, uh-huh. And then uh, I've got to wake up to tell you my dreams. Yes, uh, I like the effects on the guitar uh-huh. and the echo, and I just like like the song in general. Again, that's another that's another one of these songs. We kind of, we just had that riff, and we kind of say to say to him, right, just get this riff, and we're just going to build on it. Yeah, 
but that's yeah. where we went, kind of thing. Um, and well, then obviously, again, with the technology and just creating something for that moment, kind of yeah. thing. So it kind of all started in that guitar riff. It just repeats. Yes, it does. But again, it, it's effective. Uh, uh -huh. it, uh, well, the uh, what what was happening around this time with Sarah? Um, because um, you know the next year, uh, mm -hmm. the live show, the farewell party. Yeah, uh, was it? Uh, I mean, did they did they they tell you guys or talk to you about? They were it just kind of well, I, I it kind of came out of blue, but they yeah. they just said number one hundred will be the end, and that's that. And you had to respect that, right? That was just uh, that. That's again at the end of the day, they're their own individuals and they have to do what's best for them kind of thing. So uh, I, I think they did the right thing at the time. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. well, they had a, they had a nice run. Uh, that's for yeah. sure. And like you said, and there's been a resurgence of interest. Um, no, no. And again, if you think at the time, Greg, the set of records took a, a pummeling as we call it. It was like the press, the music press were bad and it was just, it was like poor journalism. Right. Right. Um, and to see how it's like 20 odd years later, 30 years later, what's happening. And obviously the resurgence inside of records then, um, that's great kind of thing. And Matt and Claire don't have it. As I said, they built a beautiful record label. They did what they wanted to achieve. And then in the end, they decided it was time to go. Yeah. And they've left a legacy for themselves. And, and again, uh, the bands like ourselves, another band like Field Mice, um, St. Christopher, The Wake. Oh, yes. we, we all managed to put out great, good albums, great records on that label. So we are quite happy. Right, right. Yeah, they have left legacy, like you said. Well, the, can you recall the uh, farewell party, August? Oh, the, oh, I, or do you want to? I have to no, no, no. It was, it, was a, it was a great day. Um, and we have to say we were very drunk when we played, <laughs> and I can't even. It was very late. It may have been late, quite late at night. Um, I mean that was it, and there was a party back at um a house after it. I think it was it was Matt and Claire's house, kind of thing. There was a party, and um, and that was it. Yeah, how many other bands played? Do you remember? Uh, there was a whole a host. There was loads. <laughs> Most of the on uh, the most, there must have been about um, at least six or eight bands. I, I kind of really, not really remember. Okay, yeah, it was a long, <laughs> long time ago. But um, and and you had been drinking, so then <laughs> yes, uh, it's been clear. a long day because we travelled into Scotland by train, so yeah. um, it was a long day. Okay, well, uh, after that, what what happened to uh, to the band? What kind um, of, what directions did you guys go? We kind of. It must have been about 90, just the end of 94, well, maybe 95 kind of things. We, we just, um, I think after the, we'd done the promotion and the gigs, the tour for After Striving kind of thing, and we had went on a tour. I think we'd been in Germany and France playing gigs, and it was a, quite a long slog as well and stuff like that. And we just came back to Glasgow, and I think... It was at that time you're thinking, no, oh, we're adults, we need to get a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> or the jobs that you were having, you were getting told, there's only so many times you can go away and play gigs and things like that. And then obviously right. you, you meet your partners and it's again, obviously having children or whatever. So these all, kind of, all these demands started to come into play. So yeah, the orchids kind of went on a kind of, we didn't, we, we kind of say we don't break, we didn't break up. We just went down the pub for a number of years. Okay. Anything and that was that. Okay. Okay. Did any 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 of the members play uh, in the interim? You know, continue to play or or. Um, Matthew Matthew kind of did a few things. He was getting more into the kind of dance scene and stuff like that. Okay. Um, he went and did that. Me personally, no, I I kind of just stayed at home and played the played the guitar. Um, and then it was only what happened is it was the reissues. It was a set of records getting kind of reissued. Um, that kind of refocused us because yeah. we started getting demands to come back and play. Right. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, when did you first hear of LTM? 
releasing it just the, be, the back catalog. It would probably be six months before we'd ever get one of them get released. It was um and that kind of started people's interest again and we started getting asked to play gigs and things like that. Um, and that then led to like, us getting back the girl, albeit we had a different kind of lineup. Well, Matt, it was a four years end where Keith came into the play. Yeah. He, he took Matthew's position. Um, and that's when we started rehearsing again and actually started writing new songs that would become the first album released again was 2000, 2007. It would be good to be a stranger. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So but you, nice. you, uh, yeah, I was going to say LCM. That, that's a nice label. They, they really is. No, and well. again, Ian, but he does. It's a really yeah. good package and stuff right. like that. It's been done well. Right. You know, one of one of my favorites, uh, Vinny Riley, Derudy Collin. I know most oh, of uh, yeah. his stuff is on there, and uh, the names. Yeah. Uh, you know, as well as uh, the Wake and, and you guys, and uh, um, uh, what is his name? Paul Haig. Paul Haig. Oh, Paul uh, Haig. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he, uh, He's a guy that's been really, really quiet. You don't hear nothing for Paul Haig. Yeah, yeah, you don't. And I, I think I tried to reach out to him um, through his website, or maybe it was Bandcamp or something. You know, one of those that you never hear back from. So, yeah, this is. I know this is not for everybody. You know, a lot, a lot of people are more retiring and they don't like being in front of a camera. I would have never, uh, let's say, ten years ago, well, five years ago, I would have never seen myself do this. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't in the cards i was doing some written interviews right. and then and then all of a sudden my one guy said well how about a video i think he would have been more comfortable doing this okay let's do that you know of course i was mm-hmm. nervous extremely nervous but then after i did the first one it became easier well I'll try another one you know you just mm-hmm. it just kind of starts steamrolling and easier yeah. easier the more you do it so i go and, again i'd because of COVID, like, um, because of during COVID and lockdowns, yeah, yeah. In terms of meetings, like you had like work meetings that were going, you had to do it online. So, oh, right, yes, exactly. Yeah, I went through a little bit of that too. <laughs> so, uh-huh. yeah. uh-huh. I, maybe that's what prepped me for this. You yeah, know? That's that's that was my fault. I was never really into it. Even when the first got the f- FaceTime on your iPhone, you get I kind of got bored with it after five right. minutes. Right, right. Don't want right. to see somebody's face. I would just go back. To, <laughs> I prefer a phone call. <laughs> right yeah i know i was i was not ready to put myself out there like that but uh you know mm-hmm. now it's just like hey you know I, I look at it like they're looking they're they're wanting to hear what you guys have to say they're not so much looking at me anyway so uh, mm-hmm. i can be, i can be a, a fool no i don't, I don't want to go try to try to be a fool but anyway <laughs> the uh so you guys started playing uh live gigs again writing like yeah. you, you mentioned um mm-hmm. And then um, 2010, uh, the Lost Star. Yes. Uh, yeah, it came out, and that was like an accumulation of material from like three years prior and up to, up to that point that you'd be. Yeah. Yep. When I first saw <laughs> Doot Doot, uh-huh. uh, you know what I thought of? You, do you remember a fur? Yes. Or, okay, uh, that's on the big I, hit they had with that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. I, no, 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 no. I remember yeah. that song well. Um, They're not going to cover that track, are they? No. And it's it's not it's not no, it's not. <laughs> I was I mean obviously James is uh, the the lyricist and the songwriter but um, that was him that put called it do, do. So, <laughs> yeah that's what that's what until yeah, it yeah. happens to you in uh-huh. parentheses yeah, yeah yeah that's that's one that I do like on there um, mm-hmm. and then Jane loves Johnny yes is another one yeah. well again that's again a Glasgow love story about a pe- people with drug addiction. Yeah, right. So I gathered that from from that one, you uh-huh. know. and then a song for a friend. You know, that's that's the, anything with a title like that about a friend. Yeah, I'm probably gonna like. All right. Uh, yeah, you know, it's sentimental. It's it's that type. You know, has a lot of sentiment in it. Nice track. Okay. And and then the one I noticed a couple of uh, three tracks that uh, is James. Um, Partial to uh, have an affinity for for France or French. Uh, yeah, it, it yeah. does. It likes France. Yes. Okay, because mm-hmm. I've noticed a couple of tr- three songs that are French, and one my favorite on that is "Les Spectacles de la Fleur." Yeah, there you yeah. go. You say yeah. it. You do it better. I yeah. think I think that translates as all the fun of a fair. Ah, oh, okay, okay. I think I so again. He does like to travel in France on vacation. Um, 
I think he likes our culture. Um, and also, I think he's read a few books that have been French and originally and then translated into English, or well, like kind of novels and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that is my uh, top pick from, from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, uh, four years later, uh, Beatitude number nine. Yeah. Uh, this may be my favorite Orchids album. All right. Okay. Of, of all of all the uh -huh. albums, I just okay. like uh, most of this, what's going on on this album. Right. Uh, so, and speaking of going on, something's going on. Uh -huh. that's, that's my first pick off of there. Uh, She's just a girl. Me right. is her is a nice track. Nice track. And I'll say my favorite for last. But uh, and and when she smiled, right. Yeah. Is really really good. I think this one's is more guitar oriented. Uh, you know, uh -huh. the whole album itself. Hey, sometimes. Hey, sometimes. That's uh, that's a good something. That's a, that's in the set for Friday in Paris. If anybody will, ah, okay. Obviously, people will know no, but so that's in the set for this week, kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. That's one. That's probably one of my favorite songs on that album. Okay, it is really nice. And then your your heart sends me. Uh -huh. Another one, and then my favorite, going back, drum roll, is uh, the the perfect foil. Yeah, uh, which may be my all time favorite track of the band. Ooh. Yeah, uh -huh. I, that that that's that's just a really really. I mean, every element's working in that one. It's mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great track, great track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, single, you know, if I dare say, I mean, <laughs> that could be a single. Uh, if we're if they're still you know if we were back let's say in the eighties yeah you know I know they're they're not uh, you know doing that so much these days releasing singles but yeah that's a great perfect foil great track um, and then moving ahead to the la latest uh, dreaming mm -hmm. kind dreaming kind uh, which is new two years old <laughs> <laughs> yeah does it can you believe it <laughs> uh, no 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 we we kind of. Um, the Blue Nile, the Glasgow band, the Blue Nile, seen it very exclusive and elusive about when it comes to recording albums. Yes, I think I think the Orchids are up there with them. It's like we like to have a good four or five years between. Them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, yeah, they're one of my favorites too. I, I I was fortunate enough to see the Blue Nile when they came to Dallas uh -huh. many many years ago, but the Lynn the Lynn drum, you know the that was that was one of the things that really set them apart. Yeah. And there was an interview done not too long ago. Uh, Brian, he's a he's a, a Irish musician, and he did the interview, and it was like a podcast. Oh, Brian, Brian Sweeney. <laughs> yes, Brian Sweeney. Yeah, no, yeah. Brian well, no, Brian oh, well. Okay, I was I, I did a, a written interview with him before I started doing these. Yeah, really nice guy, really nice guy, and uh, it was it was well done. It's well done. No, no, he's document. He's he's done one on the trash cans and actresses as well, oh. and it's very good. Oh, I'll have to listen to I that. I think he won an award for that, actually. Oh, did he? Okay. Huh? Now, that's, that's, just, that's, just, that's just the last six months. Yeah, that's another Scottish band. That, now, that's one of my top bands right there, Trash Against the Nutters. No. You know, they they just, uh, I mean, everything that they put out is, is like gold, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, and and the uh, songwriting, you know, it's just so clever uh, and uh, really, really well done. Well, uh, speaking of uh, Dreaming Kind, uh, I never thought I was clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, nice one. Uh, isn't it easy? Yep. Yep. And I'll say my favorite again. <laughs> A feeling I don't know. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and then my favorite is uh, I should have thought. That's my, my top. Oh, right. Okay. So, again, Dreaming Kind, obviously, it would have come out earlier. But obviously, like everybody else in the world, the pandemic, yeah, lockdowns, um, that kind of put a, a hold on things. We were really what happened is as well, but and it kind of as lockdown started to finish in Britain and Scotland, um, we had been looking how how we could get into the studio and stuff like that, and. We kind of spotted uh, there's a studio. We as obviously we kind of in the Glasgow area. Um, I live outside Glasgow. The other guys are in Glasgow, but we I had seen there was a a record a recording studio up the west coast of Scotland. It's near Fort William, kind of that area. 
in a beautiful part, and it's it's owned by a, a well known Scottish kind of folk musician, Mary Ann Kennedy. And it was also a studio that comes with accommodation, and because of maybe lockdown and stuff like that, prices were reduced. And I can, I can, we kind of got, we should just go for this, see if we can get everybody to go to come and finish some of these songs. So Ian flew for your, Ian Carmichael stays in Barcelona. He does like recording and producing. So he flew into Barcelona. Pauline stay, actually stays in a Scottish island, which is like seven hours by boat. Oh, is it? Right? <laughs> so she she had to get the boat to like Oban and then make her way to like the kind of Fort William area and stuff like that. So logistically, it all came together and there was like a whole team is in the studio for like a week. Yeah. And it was brilliant. The weather was actually not so bad. It was great. And um, we were just able to live there. And we just obviously, we could, we'd, like, we'd go and spend day in the studio and in the night time and relax and just have social time and kind of thing. So it was great. And that kind of helped finish off um, Dreaming Kind. So that, that was a, a great experience finishing the album in like, this really lovely part um, of Scotland. Kind of yeah. thing. Well, yeah, and it's it, with the lo logistical problems you guys had, where people located around like that. That's great that you that you all got to together yeah, at that one yeah. at that one time, you know, like that. Wow, mm -hmm. <laughs> by boat. <laughs> wow. It was, uh, no, it was it was, uh, it was a great. It was a, still you really good memories about finishing Dreaming Kind. Yeah, up in that studio and stuff like that, and um, just obviously. There's no noise pollution. There's no light pollution. You get the nighttime sky. The skies are bright and stars. It's fantastic. And mountains in the distance. It was great. Right, right. Just kind of everything came together. Yeah, everything just came together. And um, and you got to say, well, maybe that was for the maybe like, obviously the pandemic helped happened and that was it. But for yeah. some reason, we were managed to get ourselves in this studio um, just as lockdown was finishing. And, and get finished so it was good yeah well well let me ask you going back probably from the the beginning um uh do you think the uh comparisons to felt the band felt or, or <laughs> oh <laughs> or again different? felt if you if you go back to bands that we were listening yeah back in the the mid 80s right i think i think we, the I, again and uh, we went to see felt right anytime we played glasgow Right. Kind of thing. So I felt a big influence, definitely. Right. And especially uh, you know, James's vocals too. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, you hear that. So yeah. Well that's not bad. I mean, when you some a band, you know, compared to a band like that, is one of my Oh no, felt a great band favorite, and um, favorite, some sorry. brilliant albums. Brilliant oh, yeah. albums. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, so yes. Well, uh I've already asked you that question, so I won't go there. Um uh, talk a little bit about uh you guys working on new material, yeah. yeah. What what you, what you guys are and the pro progress? Well, I would just <laughs> just working on some new songs um, and just kind of getting to a, a point in rehearsals where you think it will get to a studio at some point. So hopefully, maybe later this year that will start happening. We'll get kind of songs in a recording process and on the way to getting completed, kind of thing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I don't, I don't, it will happen when it happens. There's no big massive rush. You're right. Just taking things easy. Right, right. And you guys are still, uh, you know, working together. I mean, how many years has that been since uh, oh, this unit? This unit's been together. Uh, well, the, the present we this yeah. this present unit of the orchids yeah. is like um, Ronnie, Chris, James, Keith, and myself. That's been since like 2005 or something like that. 2004, 2005. That's, that's so still, that's actually longer than the original or than, than the original. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, well, that that's great that you guys were able to reform, get back together. And uh, what what have you heard from? Um, I'm sure you've heard a lot of good input from response from fans, long time uh, fans. You know. Oh, well, I mean, it's. I have to say that. Um, being being in a band, being like fifties, being age fifty six, and still getting asked to play gigs in places like Paris and other great cities is fantastic. Yeah, uh, I mean, one of the things I still like cherish. Greg was um, it would be I think it was two thousand seven, the New York Pop Fest. Okay. So growing up playing guitar in Glasgow in the nineteen eighties, 
I mean, the Velvet Underground are a massive influence, right? right? So getting to go and play a gig in New York was just mind blown for myself personally. I just it was a pinnacle. I thought, wow, if nothing, if nothing else ever happens, I played a gig in New York. I'm really happy. Yeah, yeah. So was, was that your first time to go to New York? You said, you said or had you no, I'd been when I, I'd been uh, when I was a, a kid. Oh, okay. I, I thought I had family in. Uh, Canada and Michigan as well. Oh, okay. So, um, I've I've been to like New York State and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, but I was like fourteen at a time, so completely you know, different memories. Yeah, totally different. Yeah, yeah. But it, but it was. Yeah, I've heard that. You know that New York scene, how influential that was for oh, you. Guys over there. Especially, yeah, but, um, you know, Velvet There seems to be a thing in Glasgow for a lot of bands for New York. Right. Again, obviously, all the kind of. Right. LA, he's bands for Glasgow, like the Aztec cameras and stuff like that. And Norn's just Lou Reed is a huge influence. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Television. Uh yeah. you know, Patty Smith, mm -hmm. a lot of those. Yeah. Ramones even. Yeah. yeah. You know. Oh no, yeah. definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, all of those bands. Well, well, uh I was gonna ask you what's uh what else do you do? Uh what kind of hobbies or interests do you hobbies? Do you Besides music. Um, well, I guess the Orchids, is, um, we're all massive football fans. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, okay like, um, soccer, you used to call it. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're massive kind of soccer football fans. There's a big interest. Um, Some of us play golf. I don't play golf. <laughs> okay. Um, I just all varied things, eh? Just, yeah, yeah. I, I saw uh what was it uh on Netflix was it uh 99 the documentary on uh, Manchester yeah uh, from, from 1999 winning uh, was it the international cup the world cup I forget oh the European cup yeah European Champions European. League yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and the, and all of that leading up to that so yeah um, I haven't been a huge uh football fan you know soccer but uh that was very interesting to see that you know mm -hmm. and, oh, I get we just, um, I, but it's like some of these, like, um, have, well, obviously, we all have families and stuff, so that takes up your right. time. You're away doing things. Personally, I, I love to go holiday, I like to go on holiday to nice cunt like Greece and stuff like that. That's just, oh, yeah, that would be good I'd food. Be. Good, uh, um, I love my wine, that's my, yeah, yeah. I've never been there, uh, I haven't traveled very much at all, but the only time I came to the UK was uh, 2000. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, to see uh, Mark Mark Burgess and the Chameleons. Oh right, okay. Yeah, that's Chris my... Chris Quinn is a big Chameleons fan. Yeah, one see, of my... Mark, Bur Mark Burgess. He's, I think he's, he's been playing gigs recently. I've seen them. He was yeah, in... yeah, he has. He has. He, uh, was, he was abroad somewhere. He was somewhere in Europe playing a gig. Germany, I think. Okay. Yeah, uh, he uh, he he re relocated over here. I don't know if he's still here. I don't want to oh, spread right. rumors, but. Uh, he did. He he was doing like house parties. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, where it's you know like twenty twenty five people. And I went to see him here last year. Was it uh -huh. or maybe the year before that? And real intimate, you know, surroundings. Oh, and, yeah, yeah he, able to field questions afterwards and all that kind of thing. So totally different than going to a big yeah. big arena, you know, a big big concert hall, whatever like that. Uh -huh. All right. Well, uh, I again. Think I would just like to see if anybody wants to invite the orchids to a house party in the yeah. United States or in Canada, yeah. we'd be more than happy. Okay, all right. Glad I brought that. Glad I brought that up. Have, <laughs> as long as you've got nice wine and food, we'll be happy. Yeah, there you go. Just just feed you guys. <laughs> yeah, and uh, feed and feed food and drink. Yeah. Uh, what was no no? I've, I've, been, I've been really loved to um, again. In terms of musical influences, like getting to the West Coast, um, okay, would be great to play a gig in Los Angeles and South San Francisco. Um, oh, so, yeah, kind of thing. Maybe Seattle up that way too. Oh, yeah. that'd be uh, anywhere, kind of yeah. thing. It'd be nice. I'd, again, there's yeah. obviously like I uh, like Neil Young, all that kind of scene. Uh, so to I, get to like maybe like oh, the Troubadour yeah. or something like that would be. <laughs> Right, the Laurel Canyon scene. Laurel Canyon, we a couple of days in Laurel Canyon would be great. Right? Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, real, real casual house party, just moving around <laughs> from house to house. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. 
Well, yeah, if anybody's, you know, watching this, if there is, you know, an interest in that, you know, be sure. Uh, tell tell them your uh, your the website and and you know and, and all that. Well, again, again, obviously, you can find the orchids on Facebook and Twitter, kind yeah. of thing. That's the main ones that we use, and obviously Bandcamp. If you want to go and buy some of our nice, lovely T-shirts, there you go. Before they sell out, yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right, all right. Well, John, I appreciate your your time and for. Oh, it's uh, all. It's been a pleasure, Greg. I'm happy to talk. Um, sure. And for sharing, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get another guy on board. You know, Chris. Uh -huh. uh, you know, but uh, sometimes it's really hard to coordinate you know, more than one person. Well, he will actually be at the football at the moment. So okay, okay. there's a football yes. match on. It's like, um, so three of the orchids are in there. Are Celtic supporters, myself okay. included. Okay. Um, so Chris will be at the Celtic game. Okay, is, I think it's just about to finish. Okay. So okay, okay. We'll tell him. Be sure and tell him hi and. I'm Tell everybody, all that, everybody else hi and uh, all the best to you. And uh, all the best to you and um, stay safe. All right. We will do. You too. And uh, I know the fans will be looking forward to that uh, as it develops the new, new material. Yeah, so, I, I, exactly. Yeah, as I said, we'll, um, we are working on the kind of basis to get to uh, start recording songs and finish them at some point. So that's where we're at. Yeah, well, I'm I'm not here to light a fire under anybody, so you, know, okay. you, you, you guys do it. It's your leisure. Uh, <laughs> All right. No, All no, right. no. We're coming into winter in Scotland, um, so that will usually kind of darken it. It's like okay, well, else, there's nothing else to do. So right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's there, it. You, there you go. Same with COVID. I mean, that was kind of a mixed blessing. Uh, what oh, else I, could you do? You know. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. So yeah. writing new material. You know. Binge watch television. That's yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> right. All right, John. But it has. Well, you been take real, care, Greg. Nice to speak to you. Right. Real pleasure. All right. And I'll send you a copy of this uh, about Gosh. a week or so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Bye. All right. All right. Bye bye.